at the Glendale Xeriscape Demonstration Garden that surrounds the Glendale Main Library. And I'm Anne. I'm Polly. And I'm Kaylee. And Kaylee is our special guest today. Um, so she's here to talk to us about something really cool. Do you guys love birds? We love yes. birds, but Kaylee, tell us a little bit about the organization that you're from and tell us why we should care about birds. So I'm from the Northern Audubon Society, uh, which is a West Valley chapter of the National Audubon Society, which uh, focuses on the conservation of birds. And why are birds important? So birds are important pollinators and seed dispersers. For example, here in the Phoenix metro area, one of our popular, uh, most common hummingbirds is the Anna's hummingbird. Oh, and when, when the Anna's hummingbird, you know, when they go in for nectar, they get some pollen on their beaks and feathers. So when they visit another plant, they, they pollinate these plants. Wow. Interesting. Pollinators, you know, we, it's, it's, you know, usually when we think of pollinators, we think of the bees, right? The buzzing bees yeah. in the garden that help our flowers bloom and go to seed or fruit. Um, but hummingbirds are pollinators too. That's awesome, Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> so just like the bees, the habitat garden is a really great place to see some birds, some wild birds that we find in our backyard here. Um. A matter, as a matter of fact, our very own Melissa from the main library is doing something super cool right now. You want to take a look? Ooh, sure. Let's go check it out. Hi, Melissa. What are you doing? Oh, hi, Polly. I am working on my bird territory map. Oh, cool. I've been following a little bird around in the park. I wasn't quite sure what kind it was. But luckily, Miss Anne gave me a helpful little book, and I think it's this Thrasher. Oh, yeah, cool. it has a nice little curved bill. So I just come out here occasionally and see if I can see it. I've seen a lot of hummingbirds today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's pretty cool. I love it. Yeah. Well, I got the idea for it in this book, actually. So it's a bunch of activities that you can do with birds, and so I decided to make my own map. That's amazing. Yeah. You're such an artist. Oh, why, thank you. <laughs> Is this something that kids can do at home or families? Oh, absolutely, yes. Actually, I want to make one of my backyard, too. So you don't have to get really detailed. You can make it as colorful as you want, and then you can mark where they perch and where they nest and where they eat oh. just kind of how they how they move around in in your area that's what a neat like this is such a good stomach activity yeah i so think that would cool. be a great idea for kids awesome <laughs> thank you wow so that was really cool we got to learn from melissa about how to do a bird territory map and see all the places where a bird might go and we're, we're, we're learning a lot about birds today um what about providing them with food if we want to see these birds in our backyard what's the best way to provide them with a source of food so the easiest way um, to attract birds is to have native plants in your garden so why native plants native plants are the plants that these birds have uh, ad adapted to and learned the ones that they're most familiar with. Uh, and a good way to learn which native plants to put into your yard is to go on audubon.org slash plants for birds. Um, nice. and other ways that you can provide for birds is actually to have a hummingbird feeder. So oh. when you're making a um, sugar water mixture for hummingbirds, you're going to want to have one fourth of a cup of refined white sugar and one cup of water. Oh. You're going to boil the water and dissolve the sugar in it and then you're going to let the water cool before putting it into a hummingbird feeder. What will attract the hummingbirds to the feeder? So the bright red colors um, resemble lots of what the hummingbirds wow. um, usually go to such as the chuparosa plant. Mm. Awesome! Aww. That's awesome. So that red color, that is key. How else can somebody, if, if provide food for birds if maybe they um, aren't doing the sugar water or native plants is there another way like through seeds you were talking about yeah. seeds earlier yeah. 
So another way to provide for birds is with seeds. Oh. And these seeds um, are good for songbirds. Um, <laughs> and I found a really good recipe on Audubon site making seed cookies. Mm, I like cookies. <laughs> you may not like this cookie. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the birds will love it and we're going to show you how to make that. Very neat. You can hang it in a tree. And it's the ingredients are non harmful to birds. Awesome. Hi everybody! Are you ready to make the Audubon bird cookies? This is pretty cool. It takes a lot of patience, but you've got this. I bet you have a lot of the stuff that we need or you need at home too. We have... You want to make sure to use unflavored gelatin. So this you probably need to buy at the store, but it's in the section where you find the jello. So unflavored gelatin. We need water. We need cookie cutters, so about average size, and you probably, for this recipe, you need about a dozen cookie cutters. You can also use like the round jar lids or anything like that, but the cookie cutters work really well. And measuring cups and a tablespoon, and straws, a bowl, of course. Aluminum foil, a spoon to stir, and some yarn. And of course, this helps too. A tray to keep everything in place. This is important, so you want something with sides. So the tray. And I'm missing something. Do you know what I'm missing? That's right, we're making bird seed cookies, so we need bird seed. Is there bird seed? Are you ready to get started? Clear everything out. Okay, I'm gonna grab my bowl. The first thing we wanna do is we're gonna work with the gelatin. So, most gelatin comes in a little package, but what you want is one tablespoon of gelatin. So I'll pour that in the bowl. So, we want it to kind of melt in the water. So I have a third a cup of warm water. I heated it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. So you want to make sure to have help with that and be careful. You don't want to touch it. But that helps it melt and become a gel. Stir it up. Now we're going to add Two tablespoons of cold water. There we go. Stir that up. Get all the lumps out. And it's definitely becoming like a gelatin now. This recipe is super simple. So the next thing we're going to add is the bird seed. So I have two cups of bird seed. Again, this is kind of a big recipe. This makes 12 cookies, the average size cookie cutters. There we go. And stir it up. So the big thing that I found with this recipe is it takes a while to set. So we'll talk about that after we put, make the cookies here. Set that aside. Get the tray back out. I'm gonna use the aluminum foil on the bottom of the tray. Put that down there. And make three cookies. Got a star, a moon, and a little heart. I'm pretty sure the birds will like these. So we need a spot for the yarn to go through or the string so that we can hang it. So I'm going to use a straw for that. So I'm going to put it a little ways down and hold it. You want to make sure that it's touching the bottom. And just put your mix in. Put 
Is it bad? As you can see, it's pretty messy. Thank you for helping me, Miss Noel. <laughs> okay. Ready for the next one? So as they dry, you're gonna leave the cookie cutters in place. So, there we go. Ready for the star? Push it in, make sure it's kind of packed down. All right, uh, we're almost done. What do you think? So, that up. So like I said, this recipe can fill up to a dozen, but it looks more like, I would think it can probably make about six. So go ahead and make whatever you can with them. Now here's where the patience comes in. You're gonna wanna dry them for, you can put them, refrigerate them overnight, but dry them maybe in a warm windowsill for, for a, probably three days, for quite a while. And then once they're dry, you're gonna use your yarn and just string it through the whole of the straw and then tie it at the top and voila, you have something that you can hang in the tree for the birds. Enjoy, have fun, have fun bird watching. So we've talked a lot about birds, how important they are, um, how we can provide food for birds in the form of native plants. Uh, we can even create seed cookies um, because birds eat seeds too. And we can also provide even sugar water that we can properly make. Um, for the hummingbirds, but what else is important for birds to thrive? Hmm. Hmm. That's right. So we are actually standing <laughs> above or below a <laughs> nest, a bird nest. Kaylee, tell us a little bit about birds and their nests and what they may need. So this here is a bird nest in the sweet acacia tree. Um, to make nests, birds need twigs, leaves, organic materials, and sometimes when you brush your dog outside, they might even take some fur to line their nests as Whoa. well. Oh. So comfort is important to them too. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's cool. That is, that is really cool. Um, so if you're providing those native plants in your backyard, then you will help provide them with food, you can also help them create spaces to raise their offspring. I love the idea of attracting birds to our homes. That's yeah. great. Hello library friends! I'm Alex, a librarian from Glendale Public Library. And on this lovely Earth Day, I want to read you this book, GQ GQ. Where Are You? Adventures of a Gamble Square. This book was written by Sharon I. Reed and illustrated by Nadia Komarova. I'm going to read this book to you with permission from Sharon Reed's family and her publisher, Little Five Star Publications. Watching the birds, we can see the whole world around and to learn about other different animals, about other birds, about different plants. So let's spend a little time with Gamble's quail. His name is Georgie, but often called GQ, just for fun, just for fun. He's a young Gamble's quail 
who lives in Arizona, in the desert, in the desert. Look how beautiful desert around, especially in the spring. One day he went exploring early in the morning, far from home, far from home, looking for some playmates among the many cacti, big and small, big and small. GQ, GQ, where are you? Where are you? Hiding near a choya and underneath at a brittle bush with yellow flowers. With yellow flowers. Very beautiful flowers. Where is GQ? Do you know this plant? Where is GQ? This fine day, this fine day, walking near the prickly pear. You're right. Jumping on the fence posts. Looking for friends, looking for friends. What friends he can find here? Oh, I see woodpeckers on this page. GQ, GQ, where are you? Where are you? But GQ on this page. He's playing with the doves and talking with cardinals, having fun, having fun. Oh, GQ was getting tired walking through the desert. Time to nap, time to nap, searching for a shady spot. Let's see what he will find shady spot. Underneath the purple sage, cool and quiet, cool and quiet. But he can't stay long there. Wake up, GQ, wake up, GQ. Stay alert, stay alert. Watch out for the coyote. And the creeping rattlesnake run away fast, run away fast. All this activity made GQ hungry. Looking around, looking around. Could you guess what GQ likes to eat? You're right. Seeds and leaves and cacti fruit all are quite delicious. Time to eat, time to eat. Evening is coming. Evening is coming to the desert, to the desert. George starts to walk home quickly past lizards, snakes, and mice, rats, and skunks. GQ, GQ, where are you? Where are you? You ride back home with his parents and eight young Gamble Square, ready to rest, ready to rest. What a wonderful book. This book has even CD here where you can listen how Sharon reads singing to you and reading. Also, in the book you can find different type of activities that you can make and description plants, animals and other birds that live in Arizona. Thank you so much, Sharon Reitz and Nadia Komarova for this lovely and wonderful book. And you, my friends, have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed this reading and I will see you in the library. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. It's me, Noelle. And to continue on with the last little bit of our... Uh, our Earth Day segment today, I'm going to be reading The Nest That Wren Built by Randy Sonnenshine and illustrated by Ann Hunter. These are the twigs dried in the sun that Papa collected one by one to cradle the nest that Wren built. This is the bark, snippets of twine, spidery rootlets, and needles of pine that shape the nest that Wren built. These are the leaves of ruby and gold fallen from trees sturdy and old that weave the nest that Wren built. This is the sack, silky and white, brimming with spiders whose feast on mites that threatened the nest that Wren built. This is a snakeskin warding off harm, a scaly thin reptilian charm draped on the nest that Wren built.
This is the moss softer than suede stone from stones cool in the shade to line the nest that Wren built. Look, he goes Neil. These are the feathers, petals, and thread placed on the moss to soften the bed that waits in the nest that Wren built. Look at all that. Getting really big and pretty, huh? This is the tuft of rabbity fur plucked from the sharp persnickety burr to warm the nest that Wren built. This is the papa perching nearby, chirping a mirthful song to the sky and guarding the nest that Wren built. And these are the eggs laid on the bed of velvety moss, feathers, and thread, safe in the nest that Wren built. Oh. These are the hatchlings scratching within, stretching and pecking all scrawny and thin, that hatch in the nest that Wren built. Look, a little peek. This is the papa hunting for food, a spider, a spider or beetle to nourish the brood that waits in the nest that Wren built. Do you see it? Do you see it? There it is. These are the nestlings drowsy and fed, snuggly and plump on their feathery bed, warm in the nest that Wren built. Ooh. Look, they're all coming to see. These are the fledgling, 14 days old. They inch to the edge while feathers unfold. Then they fly from the nest that Wren built. There they go. Oh, and guess what? It looks like the wren and the family have moved out. And guess who's moving in? There it is. Very good. So we've learned throughout our Earth Day program that we have various foods and we have habitats and we have all kinds of different information on how to keep um, on how to keep your, your birds or your, your birds happy and healthy in our, in our natural environment. And they build nests everywhere. We have nests in trees, on the ground, in cactus even. And the nests, when they're empty, are sometimes homes for other animals, like you saw in that last photo of the mouse. So... You know, if you see a nest in the area, leave it alone. Because you don't know if, you know, you don't, you don't know what's going on. If that's, an, if that's a new home for a different animal or, you know, you just don't know. So just leave it alone, okay? And then there's a little bit more information here. I'm just going to let it sit there for a second. Um, and, but yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed our... Um, our Earth Day program, and we will see you real soon, and have a good day. Bye, guys.